Hello. My name is Lacrish of a day. Bravissimo! Once upon a time, there were three little bears. There was a mama and a papa and a baby. And they lived in the forest, deep down in the dark forest. And all of a sudden, one day... We searched and searched and searched for a name. We were, we were desperate at one point. We were saying chair theater, cup theater, hand theater, tree theater. It was very difficult to find a word that hasn't been overdone with this particular art form. So we found the word jest, and we added the in time as a pun, because we feel like we we're just in time. The way we rushed to get to jobs and how we live, basically, is just in time. Tonight, Inquiry is on the road with Just In Time Theater. Sherry Lee Hunter. Mary Ellen McLean. Shelley Wallace. Christian Murray. And Franz Reinbaut. They live in Halifax, but they perform all over Canada. This week, they're traveling through New Brunswick. I really don't want you to be late anymore for the rehearsal. Wrong thing. We'll talk because about there will be a price to pay. great love of comedy and that's how our group basically got together was we're all very interested in comedy all the members of the group we come up with a lot of our, our ideas by just playing and fooling around with each other We just go in, and everyone does has their own job to do. I do a certain thing. Mary Ellen does something else. Christian does something else. Franz just checks the lighting and runs around. Uh, Shelly usually works out the order. We, I mean, we're just like little bees that come in. <laughs> Yeah. 
that woman saying, Kill that, kill that, that is very tragic. <laughs> tragic, I mean, it's ridiculous. This poor woman saying, come on, it's, it's tragic. To me, it's tragic, but it's funny. It's very funny. I'm starting to get a handle on a few concepts, but it's it's really a sort of a lifetime work. It's not, you know, it's a real craft, and that's I think that's worth the five of us are working at to make it a craft. Like a, a woodworker, you know, with a with a plane always creates the same edge. He knows where to go, and I think that I think that's what we're looking for in our craft. glad you could join me today. <laughs> but, see, Lucretia is still in development, too, because I'm starting to develop this, a voice for her. It's, uh, it's an interesting thing because my body is well trained, and now I'm starting to discover that a voice is an important thing. So, the body is starting to form. I know that I have these eyelashes and this nose. I mean, look at the profile. I mean, anyone with a nose like that knows what they're doing. <laughs> if you want to be an artist, or if you are an artist, it doesn't matter if you do music, or if you write, or write poetry, or a performer, you have to be in touch with that playfulness. You have to be in touch with that, that, that um, childlike innocence, uh, the truth of things, and not be afraid of it. I think that is a necessity for, for, for creativity, absolutely. And the garage, you said you'd clean up the garage. You're never gonna clean up that garage. And you know what tomorrow is, don't you? It's Thursday. That's right, Thursday. And I want you to march right home with that paycheck. We've got mortgage payments. And another thing, when my mother comes to dinner, she always has to watch TV and the toothpaste tube. You always leave the cap off. And another thing. Our ideas come from, I don't know where they come from. They could come from the unbroken web, which is people's storytellers say, there's a web around the earth and all good stories go and live in that web. And when the story wants to be told, it'll come down through the storyteller. And another thing, the house. You said you'd paint the house. It's peeling so bad, it looks like a birch bark tree. And the toothpaste tube. You leave the cap off all the time. That's really annoying. And another thing, the garbage. You said you'd put out the garbage today. You haven't put the garbage out in time in 14 years. And another thing, when my mother comes for dinner, do you always have to watch TV? And the cousins, let's turn in here and get something for Christmas. No, stop, let's go back. I don't get any money from you. Inquiry will be back in a minute with more Just In Time.
There's no way that we can sort of end the job at five and go home. We have to sort of get under the skin of everyone in this group. Everyone sort of knows what everyone's doing. Not to the point where it's, you have no privacy, because there is privacy, but we do have to know each other inside and out. I look after the costumes and the props, and I always end up doing the laundry. And uh, usually I end up taking everyone else's too. It's my time that I can have by myself when I come to the laundromat, talk to people that live in the town. Uh, hello. Nice to meet you there, buddy. Laundromats are weird little places. I like them. I find it hard to go spend time by myself at times. But once I do it, I always feel um, more settled and based out. And I can bring more to the group then. Another thing, <laughs> we all love it. The bashing, like uh, stage, stage combat. You know, way where you uh, get your head slammed on the table or kicked in the face or, or slaps. It's this is very funny. There's an immediate um, connection with all of us. Eh, we show that. We will. You take now care you of the down on the knees. Down on knees. Okay, move. You stupid boy. <laughs> all right, we're ready for the show all now. Right. Okay, we're all ready. Warmed up tender, you okay? Yeah. yeah. Somebody's never just because five people are the same. You could even, you know, you might as well have a solo uh, show then with one person. The most important thing for me is that they are very different people, very different people. And because those five different people are there, what they together make is therefore very unique, extremely unique. Hi. Hi. Could I have an uh, aerogram, please? Sure. How much is that? 
Seventy-two, please. Mm -hmm. I think that when I write to my parents, I write, I describe a little bit, you know, that I'm on tour, I'm there, I, I moved from home to New York, from New York to Boston. She said, oh, great Boston, Boston to Portland, Maine. Oh, great Portland, Maine. And from Portland, Maine to Halifax. Oh, yeah, sure, Halifax, why not, you know? They know me well enough, or they like me, or they love me well enough to just accept what I'm doing. I mean, there's a difference between accepting and just feeling good what a person does and really understanding what a person does. Bravissimo! Da 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 Call it the hallway to the next show. It's like you travel along this long hallway and you get to the show and you, you just see things from the window. You never actually experience them. You're just packing things up and going down the hall. I knew a boy named Victor Baker and when I was five in, in uh, kindergarten. And on my first day in kindergarten, I punched him in the nose and gave him a bloody nose. Because he took my finger paints. And I, was an, I liked art and crayons, and he took him, punched him right in the nose. Whenever we go away, I like to go someplace, mostly outside, and just sit there and listen. Especially when you perform, because you're, you're listening, but you're also constantly having to put out, put out, and to just sit there and receive is kind of nice, you know. I've been clicking away for the last couple of years. I think things that appeal to me visually, I just kind of turn around and click, click away angles and, and um, I don't know, shadows and buildings playing them in the water and the reflections. It's kind of, kind of a neat, kind of a neat thing, sort of relaxing, you know, just, just me and my camera. It teaches me to work in a frame and um, we work in a frame on stage Oh, 
I read or write, um, listen to music, um, dream, think. Sometimes some of my best ideas come after the show, after a good show. Cover yourself up now. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. That's a good You'll be fast asleep. That's a good little thing. What? <laughs> what noise? Yeah, I hear something too, Ed. I wonder what that is. <laughs> oh, what do you think it is? A ghost? Oh, Ed. Is that a ghost? Come on, it's not a ghost. Oh, I know what it is. It's just the sound of the water going through the pipes because it's so cold. That's all it is. You knew that, didn't you, Ed? <laughs> Okay, what if I tell you a story? Oh, come on. Don't you like to hear a story? Oh, come on. You get cozy and I'll think of a story. <sighs> okay, Eddie, you cozy? Okay. The three little bears. <laughs> Once upon a time, there were three little bears. There was a mom and a pup and a baby. And they lived in the forest, deep down in the dark forest. And all of a sudden, one day... Are you making fun of me yet? Good, because that's not... All right, then. That, that's it. That's it. I'm going to sing you a lullaby, and you have to go to sleep. Goodbye, Teddy, the tree top. When the bow breaks, the <coughs> Teddy will drop. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, you won't really drop it, okay? You won't really drop. It's just a song, okay? I don't know who wrote the song, Ed, okay? <laughs> oh, this reminds me of a story. Tell it to me. <laughs> Tell us. Just tell the end, okay? The end. Good. <laughs>